why you need that to progress and get better at what you do. Because it never gets easier. You just get better. Back ability. If that is even a word. I don't know, bounce back ability. You have the ability to bounce back. Just bear that in mind in whatever you're doing. And remember that Michael Jordan missed over 9,000 shots, whatever it was. And there were games that he could have won for his team and he didn't. Hard to stay. I feel like you're never relevant. Like, I feel like, not never, but I mean like, you're battling to stay relevant. Roll the intro. Oh, finally guys, we are here, we're live on what is my third podcast. Um, yes, this is mainly for audio, but I'm doing a video anyway for you guys on YouTube. You loyal, loyal fans, you old school Gs. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot a lot planned for today. Um, it's a bit out of date, this podcast, I'll be honest. Um, but yeah, if you saw my latest vlog, you know, a lot's been going on at home this week. And I've I've left out a bit because there's been so much that I probably just went right like literally my brain probably just forgot. Just went right past some of the stuff that's happened this week because there's been so much. But yeah, I'm here for a podcast. Once again, I'm back, guys. And when I was writing the the plan for this podcast, it was when I just got back from Nottingham two weeks ago from the second weekend of the season, of power chair football. Um, yeah, I've got vlogs that explain it in more detail. And I probably will have to again in one of these podcasts. Um, but yeah, well, today I'm going to get into it a little bit. Talk about what went on over that weekend. My emotions. There was a lot, let's just say that. And of course, after that, a lot happened at home since, you know, we've had our ceiling almost collapse. That's been redone, redecorating upstairs downstairs almost every room apart from this room so it's been busy uh one of our cats passed away so that was sad we had to put it down she had kidney failure r.i.p jinxie uh yeah i don't know uh, for those of you who do have pets you know exactly what it's like it's like a family member it's the same we've got another cat but even that cat knows like she's not the same without a sister you know they were sisters Two cats. So obviously one's going to notice that, you know, if the other one's not there. So that was difficult, seeing that and being around when that happened. When we realised we had to take her to the vet and that would have been the last time we are going to see her. It's not easy, but, um... Yeah, when I wrote this vlog, that hadn't happened yet. And a lot of the stuff that I've mentioned recently on the channel hasn't happened yet, wouldn't have happened yet. But yeah, so about two weeks ago, as it is now... I was in Nottingham for a second Padger football weekend. We won three games, we lost two. Now, one of the games we lost to Manchester, the other game we lost to Bolton. The Manchester game we needed to win, we would have been second. Had we won that, no. We were second, we would have been first on points if we won that. Just that we just scraped it, we would have. But we lost that game 4-1 in the end. The other game we lost 2-0. So yeah, I, ma I did make a vlog. Yeah, I made a vlog about that weekend as well. Yeah. And it was down to fatigue that we lost those last two games. In the vlog, I did mention that, I think. Overall, um, no, a good weekend because we won more than we lost. You know, nine points from five games. It's, it's uh, well, I, I would have said we expected 15. To win every game and get every point. But it's sports at the end of the day. There's two teams competing. And they want to win just as much as you do. Normally. Normally that's the case. You get some, you know, little little bet here and there on the side. Oh yeah, why don't you let one in for us? We've got a bet on you. No. We don't do that. <laughs> There's no money in this game at the moment. For players anyway. <laughs> yeah, I found a quote. 
that might give some perspective. So this is from Billy Jean King. Don't know exactly who he is, to be honest. I think NFL or something. Anyway, his quote reads, A champion is afraid of losing. Everyone else is afraid of winning. Um, <laughs> we were afraid of losing and we were very upset that we lost. Wanted to, win, wanted to win every game. So a champion has that mindset of wanting to win all the time. So we, we, If we've got that mentality, that's so, surely that's a good thing. In life, I mean, with any situation, you've got to have an upside. You've got to see the upside. But, of course, it's difficult in that moment to see the upside. Yeah, it's so true, though. And no one likes to lose. Um, my teammates didn't, and neither did I. But like I said, no one likes losing. And the game we lost, really, was a game we did not want to lose. And I thought we would win it. Most of us did. We made mistakes. And to be honest, it was not fair. It did not go our way. Uh, I'm not going to say... Things about the ref, I'm not going to end up like Mourinho, always in trouble with referees, moaning at the ref. I blame the ref though, because there were times when decisions went against us, and there were, I, you can't blame anyone if they're a bad decision. So everyone makes mistakes, but the other team just take their set pieces so quickly. Like you need to be five min five meters from the ball, the, like the opposing team in this case us, and we physically didn't have the time to move from when they took it, to move five metres away. So we were on the point of one of our players getting booked because he couldn't move in time because they were taking it so quickly, you know, and not calling for the five metres. Like you would, I mean, why would you take it that quickly? Well, obviously you would because the other team's not set up. And we won and we conceded two goals as a result. Um, I don't want to get in, it just really upset me at the time. Um, in hindsight, it's not that bad. You're not going to win every game, are you? Even if you want to. There's going to be one day, one moment when you slip up. you just got to reduce the amount of moments that that happens being at the crucial time in the season or in the, in the game. Yeah, it's the first game we lost. And I wouldn't say we were a lesser team than them at all. I wouldn't say we were outplayed, you are just very unlucky. And their tactics on those throw-ins. But on any other day, we couldn't beat them. It's not like we, we can't beat them, you know what I mean? It's not like, oh, it's Barcelona. No. Manchester. And don't worry, we'll get them back next time. Bolton as well. We got fairly beaten in that game. We know what we did wrong. And we know what we're going to do next time, like I said. We'll get them next time. But they say you learn when you lose, and we certainly did. I mean, I've heard that from Conor McGregor. He lost with Mayweather, but he learned a lot. And when you win, you learn as well. But when you lose, you learn what to do better, how to improve what you already got. And I've heard someone say that in any sport, like in terms of sport, it doesn't get easier. You just get better. And I've been in this game 10 years, so hopefully that's true. And it hasn't gone easier, it's got more difficult. And I've had to adapt with that. And we all have, every player, so many players have adapted over the years. And I've seen it, and I've been one of those players that were in small teams and then make a difference in a big team. But there's something every player possesses that gets them to that, that level from when they first start. The passion. Um, yeah, and I've had it rough before last season, let's just say, it, with previous teams. And just glad to be in the team where we all appreciate each other, we're all on, you know, we're all res equally respected, you know, treated equal. Obviously, every player's got their unique ability and in their positions. And personally, I feel I should play more with what I've done in the past, the experience I've got. But we're a team, we're a team, we're not individuals. But I stand by that I need to play more. Because for me... What I went through in those four years, there was times when I was just doubting my own ability because I was on the bench. I was like, well, it's my fault. It's obviously my fault. I'm obviously not good enough. 
but that's the wrong way to think about it. You can't blame anyone else either. All I did was work harder. And now it's paying off. Now all that discipline I held in those year, in the top four years, I was at a top team, we're winning the league, the cup, we're in the Champions League, you know, top of the top. So there you've got to be on it every game. Even if you're not, you've still got to be somehow. And this team, I'm just so much more relaxed. But I still feel the the passion more. I'm scoring more goals because I'm playing more. But I still feel at times I'm not playing enough. And it's it gets to me. It gets to any player. You get that little doubt. Everyone has doubt. It's human. But yet, yeah, I'm not new to losing at all. And this season we won either. But I'm just saying, that was our first loss. We'll face them again and we'll beat them. Revenge, I hope. <laughs> it, it's the best game. Of, of It was the best game. Like the most anticipated game of that weekend. And I'm glad it was and we were part of it. I've been in big games before. I've been in title deciding games. And sat on the bench the whole time. It's just good to be a part of it, but... Still, I sat on the bench most of the time. And I felt I could have done more if I was on the pitch longer. And one of my teammates did call me a super sub. Yes, I like to be super in some way. But I want to start the game, mate. And I've got another quote here. Oh, Michael Jordan. I forgot I found this quote. So Michael Jordan says, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games, 26 times. I've been trusted to take the game, winning shot, and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. <sighs> the legend, MJ. Michael Jordan. Of course, there's so many other basketball players to quote. I'm so clueless on basketball, so... <laughs> the one that everyone knows. No matter what, you know, nowadays you've got Kobe, got so many names. I don't know, what's the new guy? I get mixed up with NFL players in the NBA. I don't know, I follow football, not soccer, football. The real football. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good quote. See how, how many times even him, he messed up. And I've felt that, I've felt like I'm, I've felt useless at times on the pitch. And other times you feel like a champion. And I, I surprise myself still to this day. Certain goals I've scored or not scored. <laughs> Either way, um, if I miss one, it motivates me to try again and get, get better next time. Get on target next time. Um, and I hope, guys, that what I'm saying is helping you in life, not just... You're probably thinking, like, oh, OK, I don't play a, play a sport, um, so what do I know? That's not the, It's with anything, though. And, you know, I'm making a, if I'm making a video, if, it, if I don't feel it's right, I'm going to try again. Or next time I make a video, it's going to be better. That particular area, I'm going to focus on and improve it or try and get it better, get, get it right. Because that's all you can do. You can't just, you know, you want to be a better version of yourself. And on the pitch in 10 years, I've done that. In certain situations that in the past I might have hesitated, now I don't. Uh, I mean, you know, with this podcast too, the more I do, the better I'll be. But it's not to say they're ever going to be perfect. I mean, if you achieve perfection, what what more is there to do? You know, you've got to be satisfied with what you've got, but then strive for more, of course. But there will never be a day when when everything's perfect. And with the stuff I've been through at home, with, you know, the cat and everything, and the refurbishments at home, just trying to keep a straight head or straight face, it's not easy. You just want to go mad, you just want to pull your own hair out. But the whole family's been in that state at the minute. At Christmas is coming, we've got family coming over, so we wanted the house to be ready for them. But, yeah, I, I love Project Football, and I'll have another weekend there. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Playing a few familiar teams. The Eels again, where my friend Kai plays. 
Uh, hopefully, we can win. Last time it was 1-0 when he end. Um, but yeah, just remember what Michael Jordan said. You know, how many mistakes he made as a player. When you're thinking of quitting something, don't, you know. Because you're going to fail, but you're going to learn from that. And that's going to be the thing that enables you to be successful. I think that's what Michael Jordan means. I don't know. Music review. So the 1975 have been busy. Sorry, yeah, I didn't really... <laughs> Didn't really uh, announce that, but we're moving on to the music review anyway. Yeah, I've got... You see what I mean? There's the mistake I'm going to learn from. Oh, bloody hell. Alright. Music review, yeah. The 1975. Sincerity is scary. Of course, this is on their new album. A Brief Inquiry into Online Relationships. Wow, how did I remember that? Jeez. I'm getting good. Sincerity is scary. It's true. It's very true. And the other video they got is called It's Not Living If It's Not With You. They've got new videos for both. I'm going to start with the Sincerity is Scary video. And it's very well choreographed. Choreographed. The dancing. The dancing is good. And very colourful. I, I like the the, the, the way it, the colour in the video is a lot of colour. And colour is always good, you know, primary school colours that, pri primary school colour, primary colours, <laughs> you know, your yellows, your, your greens, your blues, reds, all those colours, and just the, the the outfits as well, and all the characters he passes by, with the people, the different people, and how sincere he is in each situation, Matt Healy that is, he, as in the band member, the main the main man behind 1975 he's starring in most of the videos all of the videos really so yeah in this case he's just exchanging sincere moments with people he meets on the street basically and doing a little dance here and there and it, it goes well with the song and the the feeling of the song because in real life if someone is sincere to you you're going to be a bit shocked you know so many times that I'm sure you've seen it on the street where someone needs help and nobody's offering help. Nobody cares. It's their busy lives and that's it. And it makes you appreciate being sincere. Because all of us are guilty of times when we could have been more sincere and we weren't. Or just kind in general. Um, so overall, like I've seen that video quite a few times now. It's just fun. It's a bit of fun really. And it's not living if it's not with you. That's their other music video they released. Again, part of the same album. And that's really funny. It's like, he sees other versions of himself. It's like time travel. I don't know. So basically, he wakes up in his, like, in the room that you're in. The backstage room, basically, before a concert. Matt Healy, again. <laughs> he wakes up, but and he looks in the mirror. And he's, he's washing his face at the sink in the mirror and then his reflection in the mirror coughs and then he looks up and screams because like why is my reflection not reflection but another version of me so yeah then he wakes up again in the same spot as he's rushing to get out the door for the show hits a glass breaks the glass glass falls on the floor and from there he starts seeing other versions of himself and at one point he like his mouth is like stitched shut, we can't sing. And then he's on fire, then he jumps off the stage. All in one video, imagine. And then he ends up on the set of Sincerity is Scary. He sees himself dancing with one of the characters in that video. And he's just in the corner, like, watching himself from another moment in time. It's so good as a video, it's just time travel. Or, like, Inception. It's Musicception, I don't know. Inception, that what crazy idea. It's that kind of feel to it anyway. And then at the end of the video again, the glass falls and it smashes again. And it all starts again. What a video. Whether that even makes any sense. To watch, it's just, it's just fun. Once again, they're, they're doing well with these recent videos. 
But yeah, look out for the glass smashing. And I did make a video a few weeks back all about the band talking about this new album before they release these videos though. So do go and watch that. I might leave a clip here. And that is the 1975 of recent times in a nutshell. Moving on. I mean, it's difficult because it's a battle against yourself half the time. Because you always know you can do better. Like, you might be overly critical of something that's not that bad, really. And I've spoken about it in the past. Casey Neistat, especially, his style has helped me realise that it's never going to be perfect. Even if you think it is, someone is going to find something wrong with it. Whatever it is you're creating. And that's the case with YouTube. Whether you like it or not. Or whether I like it or not, that's how it, how it is. And it always will be. You know, there's, there's no denying that you're going to, you know, you have to put a lot of effort in with something like YouTube. You have to be constant, you know, constantly uploading, doing something different, keeping them on their toes. My vlog is more of a lifestyle kind of vlog. So more whatever I'm up to that day and helping you guys with your own situations, inspiring you, making you laugh every now and then. If I can get the jokes across, that is. And, you know, keeping you aware of what's going on in with the things I'm interested in. Hopefully some of that rings true with you guys. And it resonates, or something resonates with you. Otherwise, you know, I mean, is it worth it? If, you don't, if you're not enjoying it as well, I'm enjoying it too. I mean, if I'm talking about stuff that doesn't interest me, there's going to be no passion. How can you be passionate about something that's not something you're... You, you, is part of your life every day you know like football I could talk about football all day uh, but that's a thing that like you know I, I do vlogs focused all around football and other times I do it around music or something like that but it will be a band I'm interested in or if I'm vlogging and I'm out it'll, I'll be doing what I want to do not something in a video that someone else would 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 like you know I mean, examples of that. I mean, think of Roman Atwood, his family vlog, you know, it's a family vlog. Whatever they're up to, they make that part of the video and they make it fun. I mean, going back to Jake and Logan Paul, they will invent ideas and do that on the vlog and that'll be for the vlog. Mine's more an everyday kind of style, but I can't compare. No one can compare to another because, you know, the, the thief of comparison is the thief of joy. And so, you know, if you compare yourself to someone else and what they're doing, try and be on their level or beat them in whatever they're doing, that's like, that's not right. You've got to be your own person. You've got to do things that are part of your life, you know, things that inspire you. You can't just do what everyone else is doing. Because I've never known one famous YouTuber that has, or YouTuber in general, because I know a lot of them. Not personally, but you know, one day. <laughs> and they've all had times when they've got hate from their own fans. I haven't got that big yet, but you know, it can happen and you've got to be ready for it. But trust me, on the internet, there's so much rubbish and fake talk. BS. Just don't get dragged into it. Because that will get you, that won't get you anywhere. I mean, Donald Trump is a big example of. Someone who just argues on Twitter all the time. And arguing on Twitter is not going to solve anything, is it? You're a president of a country, for Christ's sake. You know, get get it right. You know, why are you on Twitter? And I don't know what I'm saying there. I'm going off the point, but the biggest voice that tells you you're not good enough will be your own. But, you know, I mean, everyone's going to have doubts, but I'm not saying I have that many doubts, but certainly when I don't get as many views as I normally get, it does play on my mind a bit. So even if 
no one is critical would be you that will be but in a way you need that to progress and get better at what you do because it never gets easier you just get better so yeah i mean me doing what i do now is through realizing this that you need to change and that at the same time it has to be up to you it can't be influenced by someone else I just felt it was the right time and I always thought at the beginning when will I know that I need to adapt to my game change it up when will I know well now I do <laughs> I mean you'll know trust me if you're in that sort of situation you know I mean I'll give you an example I mean not that I know this person like really well but like a friend of mine who's at uni with me she makes music and she released it on Google Music and Spotify so that kind of nowadays that kind of makes you a musician and think about that like it's not like you just wake up one day and go okay today I'm a pro musician no the music in that kind of way the passion would have been from a young age like with me with YouTube I mean it's a bit different because I didn't say I want to be a YouTuber from a young age but I had passion for like the things I have passion for are what are reflected in my vlogs and when someone makes music it's got to be a, a, a lifelong passion like you got to always be a fan in some ways part of your, your everyday routine and like I said so a friend of mine became a musician so I'm just a mate it's just amazing great to see I'm I'm really happy for her because you know how tough the industry is. It's it's not it's not easy to to make it in that industry. Not at all. So sorry, my nose is just really itchy. Just right now. I think I'm about to sneeze, that's probably why. And I should probably stay still because I just hear my chair moving the whole time. Alright, so yeah, that's that's what I got written down there. But like I said, you need to fight that own voice in your head. It's the voice in your head that will be the one that will be giving you the doubt. So, I mean, and other people, will there be someone that won't like what you're doing? Or won't believe what you've been through to get there? Because they can't see the whole picture, because... If they've seen you in one moment of your life, they're not going to know the struggles. The, I mean, I went to Padre football training this weekend, and I I didn't go around telling everyone all the shit I've been through this week, because it's not worth it. You don't want to. Why do you want to burden people with that? I mean, on the vlog or on the podcast, yeah, I can do that because, you know, it's for me to resonate for you guys to resonate with me in some way or learn from my mistakes in your own life and know that we all make them but yeah I didn't go around on the weekend telling all my teammates oh this happened my cat died my roof almost collapsed you know because I'm there to train I'm not there to talk about what's going on in my life but you can still put on a mask and I had to in some ways as hard as it just smile and wave literally half the time you're just smiling and waving and you know because you can't let all that out on everyone you see because it's just not fair that's life I'm sure you've had situations where you just wanted to explode and like literally go mad like I, I, I had it when I was in lectures like at uni there would be a lot going through my mind but other essays I had outstanding and I'd just be like going mad in my own head. But you, you, and then you remember you're in a lecture and you need to know what they're talking about so you can remember it when you're writing your next essay. You know, things like that. It's just, it gets piled on. And a lot of the pressure people put, people get or feel is from their, their own thoughts and their own worries or anxiety. Not that I have any of that, but I mean, Speaking of that kind of thing, anxiety, you know, or depression in some ways. 
look at Tyson Fury. I mean, that boxing match was that was amazing. To see a guy get up in the 12th still, just being knocked down so many times. He got back up, yeah, he lost, but he should have won, Tyson Fury. He should have beaten Deontay Wilder, but he didn't. He didn't get the the result, didn't go his way. And he, him himself, it's not like he's he was going to sit there and moan the whole time. He didn't. After, in the you know, the press conference after the fight, he was pretty upbeat and amazed and pleased that he got that far. And he, he said in the interview that he did it for people with mental health and with depression to prove that you can come back to reality. You can achieve and have a normal life despite that. And yet, I don't have mental health, but I've got physical disabilities that can prevent you from doing things in the same way. You just can't let them. you just got to know that it, it's all, it could always be worse and you can come back. I mean, you can have a normal life. I mean, there's people who get in horrible accidents and recover. There's people who don't, but they still have a normal life. I've, I mean, Tyson Fury himself, it's not like he's fully decover, recovered from depression because it's not something that goes away. I mean, it can be part of you all the time. Like, one, a resilient... Something that's, like... A resilient disease in some way, you know what I mean? Like, it never goes away. It's part of you. Whether you're depressed on a daily basis or not, it can be... You know, it can be very random. In his case, it was. It was up and down. I mean, after the biggest high in his life of beating Klitschko, he suffered depression and drug and alcohol addiction and gained loads of weight and then the whole thing with this fight began and he lost all that weight, got back in shape, got ready and fought Deontay Wilder and all the way to the 12th round and he himself admitted that Deontay Wilder is a hard hitter, one of the hardest in boxing, you know, and the reach, they both had a huge reach, like they've got long arms basically. And I didn't watch the fight. I, oh, there's no way I was going to be up that early. Um, it's just not, not me, to be honest. For a fight that could have gone either way. But I've seen the highlights and earlier on, I mean, a lot of the time Wilder was getting battered and beaten up by Fury. But in the end, he, he did have some firepower. A lot of firepower, actually. And Tyson Fury felt that. I mean, to last all that all that time, credit to him and credit to his comeback. And they're going to fight again, I hope. And I might have to watch that one because this sounds really good. And he'll be ready next time. And he lost, but he learned a lot about his opponent, I'm sure. Again, you know, you learn when you lose. And boxing and... Football and any sport like that is similar. I mean, yeah, you're a team in box in football, but like boxing, you know, you can one week you can be battered, the next week you can be a champion, and it can be up and down. And you want to win every fight, you want to win every match, but it doesn't always work out. And you know, Tyson Fury got you know he didn't get well beaten. I mean, it was close. He should have won, but he came out the wrong side of the result. But he knows what to do next time. But credit to Deontay Wilder, he is a fierce opponent for anyone. And I, I'll be honest, I didn't know him that well before this fight. But now I do. And I rate him highly. I mean, I'm not an expert on boxing at all. But there you go. Um, it's been exciting, the lead up to the fight as well. The trolling, <laughs> Tyson Fury going around asking people in America... Do you know who Deontay Wilder is? A lot of them, well, he probably told them his name and goes, do you know who I am? Well, he just told us, Tyson Fury, you know. It's funny. The world, the world of boxing these days. Speaking of which, I, I recently saw Creed 2, and a lot of people said it was good, but I didn't like it. Tell me what you want, it was too cheesy. But the story of Rocky... Is, is, is a nice one. 
he re reunited with his son and his grandson for the first time, so that was that was nice to see. And I've just ruined the movie for all of you. I won't say any more, but just Nike product placement is all I'm saying. And I do like, I mean, compare the. I mean, I don't want to say it was, was it is worth watching. Go and watch it and formulate your own opinion. Don't listen to what I say, but I prefer the first one. But, you know, there's always, always different opinions, and I'll probably look back in the future and, and uh, having watched it again, and give a different opinion. But, yeah, it's just a, it was a sequel, so you tend to get that, a bit of disappointment with a sequel. But, again, formulate your own opinion, don't listen to that, but that's just my view. But the scene when he was warming up for the fight is really good. They're in the desert, basically, that's what I'm going to say. It's in the trailer, anyway. So, no, I mean, you can't beat the original Rocky movies. Creed, yeah, it's the same, same world, if you like. But, yeah, Rocky was just a unique film. I've seen, it so, I've seen all of them many times, apart from the fifth one, the fifth Rocky. But, so, yeah, Creed 2 is, like... I don't know. I'll give it a rating out of 10. I'll, I'll say 7. 7 or 6. You know, 10 being the best, 1 being the worst. I'll give it a 7 or a 6. Film reviews, there we go. And, yeah, there's one other film I saw that I haven't done a video about I should have. It's too late now, probably. Or, or Well, too late this week, anyway. And that is... Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody. The story of Queen. And Freddie Mercury, of course. Well, mainly Fred Freddie Mercury. So, Bohemian Rhapsody was... very much a film that... was highly anticipated by me. Anticipated. If I can get the words out. Um, I, I loved it, to be honest. A lot more than Creed. I'd give it a solid 8 or 9 out of 10. No, 8. I can't go 9. Yeah, 8. I'm never going to give 10 on any movie. Be because that's just, like... No movie's 10 out of 10, is it? Really? There's the odd movie, but yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody were about the story of Freddie Mercury. Originally from Zanzibar. His family were refugees from Zanzibar. They were kicked out, basically... It's political, basically. I don't want to go into that. So they came to London when he was 18. And that's where it started. The film is great because the characters are so spot on of all the band members, like the actors they chose. One of them, I think the guy that plays the drummer is, was actually in EastEnders. <laughs> he, he did play Peter or Bill for a bit in EastEnders. Or one of the actors that played him. Anyway, the guy that played Freddie Mercury was Remy Malek, the star of Mr. Robot and a few other movies. If I'm not mistaken, he was in Night at the Museum. He was the uh, one of the pharaohs that Ben Stiller was like at, in that film with him. Is that movie with Ben Stiller anyway? But anyway, long story. Remy Malek, the star of this film, played Freddie Mercury. And it's just, the last half of the film was really emotional because it's when he finds out he um, he's sick, basically. And he tells the band and they realise that he's dying, basically. And when he does, he does, um, and the ending of the film is Live Aid, 1985, where they performed one, one of their, probably one of their best performances as a band. I mean, the film is a, shows the whole career from beginning to end, really. Freddie Mercury. I mean, the main bits, you know, they don't want to get it all spot on, are they? There's going to be bits that are exaggerated and jumbled up here and there. But what a band. I mean, the other members were part, part of the band already. It was, it was under a different name. Different lead singer. Then the lead singer quit and Freddie asked to join. Like that. 
well, that's not his real name, but he changed his name for the purpose of the band. Legally changed it to Freddie Mercury from Farouk. Is that his first name? Yeah. But I can't remember what his second name was. But yeah, so a, a great all-round film. If you like Queen, you'll love all the songs. It just, you get goosebumps. And I was singing every song, I swear to you, throughout the whole film. I didn't know I was such a big fan of Queen. Um, it's just amazing to, like, witness it, you know, because way before my time, and I've got uncles and family members, and my dad, they're all huge fans, and they were, they were, they were around in those days. They're dinosaurs, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but well done to Rim Malik for pulling off the character so well. The character, the legend, the rock legend. I mean, he's voted to have one of the best voices in music. Like, say what you want, that's probably close to ac accurate. Uh, he's not far off. Not far off at all. And so I was just really happy to see that. Grateful to have seen it. And I'm just tell I'm, I was telling everyone, friend cousins of mine that don't even like Queen, I was like, do you like Queen? You have to see this movie. If you don't, watch the movie anyway. Classic. And that I would watch again, for sure. And my opinion wouldn't change. Would have happily gone to the cinema again. But yeah, for that movie, we went to... The Everyman Cinema in, not Mill Hill, can't remember where, but normally we go to the Everyman Cinema, the local one, in Barnet, but we didn't because it wasn't actually being shown there. So yeah, we went to, no, I think it's like East Finchley, I think, Muswell Hill, that's it, Muswell Hill, Everyman, a lot bigger, and yeah. So, Bohemian Rhapsody do... Well, is it in the cinemas anymore? I don't even know. I, it might still be. Creed 2 definitely is. I'd recommend both. Very different movies, of course. But yeah, again... Passions of mine. A bit of football went on. Over the week. A lot of football. So last Saturday, you saw the vlog, I was at the Tottenham Chelsea game, what an amazing game to be at, we battered, and I mean battered, the Rent Boys, and that was a, the best game I've seen, probably of all time, of my Spurs team at home, at Wembley anyway, for sure, not many teams like that, I mean not many games like that. Not many teams like Spurs at the moment. But midweek, I was there again. Tottenham into Milan. Bit of a tighter game. We beat them anyway. 1-0 though. Great goal. Turn from Dele Alli, The goal scored by Eriksen in the end. Came off the bench to score the winner. What a legend. I mean, we've got an all-round team. And Sissoko was a man possessed. Since, he's been like that since the Chelsea game. He's been the man possessed. Playing in midfield... Um, and we haven't missed Dembele in that sense, but he's, he gets the ball and he's he's a train like he doesn't stop. I've never seen someone run that much, but then be so yo-yo as a player. I mean, I've heard it from a few Newcastle fans. He was ninety-eight percent rubbish and two percent good. You know, there'd be days when he'd be terrible and you'd be like, "Get out of my team," and there's other days would be like, "Oh, this guy's amazing." I mean, he hit form when he was in the World Cup. Comment. Not this one, maybe the one before the World Cup. And he became a £30 million player. And Newcastle made money when they bought him, when we bought him off them. And at the time, it didn't look like a good deal. Whether it is or not, at the moment, it, it was... Well, before the Arsenal game, it was paying off. I wouldn't blame one player for the loss. But you always want to beat your rivals, the scum that is Arsenal. And that didn't go well at all. That was Sunday. I'm still still raw from that. I didn't watch the game, thank God. It would have been a waste of time. I mean, I would have been so depressed. I was at Powerjet football training, like I said. And so, I'm just glad I wasn't watching it because 
it was just a mess of a game. Losing 1-0 from a penalty. For Tongan, what are you doing handballing it? What, I mean, why? Why is he handballing it there? Just a mug. And I was just saying how Vertonghen was doing well. The way he came back from injury. And he was back for the uh, Inter Milan game. And he was solid there. But yeah, after the chaos of that game. I don't know. It's a North London derby. Always goes one way or the other. But never in a normal fashion. It's always going to be mental in some way. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I was watching the highlights. And I saw Vertonghen. I mean, sorry. I saw Aubameyang's goal when I was like, no, I'm turning this off. I didn't watch any more highlights after that. Because, obviously, they scored an another one and it was 4-2 in the end. But we were winning 2-1 at one point. We had a penalty as well. Scored it. Kane, of course. But it wasn't enough. It was not enough. And, yeah, end of that because that was just... I didn't think we were going to lose. I thought I thought 2-2, two, two, to be honest. Or 2-1 to us. Then it just went on and on the wrong way. Let's just say that. Um, we have Southampton next, midweek. I'm just still shell-shocked by it. But, come on, Spurs. We can fight back. We'll beat them next time. It's fine. The teams we have to beat overall to have any chance in the league of doing better in the league than last year is Liverpool and City. I mean, if we'd beaten Arsenal, it would already we had an outside chance before that, outside, outside chance of winning the league. Yeah, and we lost that, so we don't have a chance. Well, small, smaller chance, minute chance, but we can't go losing games like that. And we've lost this season three games to Liverpool... Man City and Watford. The Watford game, yeah. Don't go there. <laughs> Don't go there. The City game, we lost 1-0. That was really annoying. I was there for that. I think I was there for the Liverpool game too. The Liverpool game was earlier in the season. We lost 2-0, I think, or 1-0. But there you go. I mean, it's really close in those games. But when it comes to London derbies, anything happens. It goes, like, someone gets battered or... Or it's a like, high-scoring draw. Or it's a nil-nil and really boring. You know. I mean, you remember when the Manchester derby was good. <laughs> Look at it now. It's literally just Man City steamroller, steamrolling past United. Or over United or whatever you call it. Just chaos, isn't it? I mean, United aren't even in the top four race, you know. Well, I mean, they're, they're fighting for that at the moment. But yeah. Up the Spurs anyway. And I think that's close to the end of this podcast. I mean, the second half wasn't planned. It's just more random, which I'm proud of. It went well. I think it went well. Um, but yeah, when I make these... Um, there is planning that goes into it. Whether you noticed that or not, I don't know. But um, I want to thank you guys for having faith in me in some ways. And if you're listening on iTunes, enjoy. I um, hope the audio is good enough. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, what's up, guys? <laughs> Any platform, all the platforms, yeah. But, like I said, you learn when you lose. And as I said at the beginning, I went through a lot of those emotions two weeks ago in Nottingham when we, we won three games and we lost two out of the five and I, I always want to win you always want to win as a team we always want to win but it didn't work out that way but we we've learned from our losses and next time we're going to do a whole lot better and we know what we did wrong and where to improve so in life whatever you do know that if you do mess up you will have learned something and next time you do what you're doing or if you pursue something different um you have the ba that bounce back ability, if that is even a word. I don't know, bounce back ability? You have the ability to bounce back. Just bear that in mind in whatever you're doing. And remember that Michael Jordan missed over 9,000 shots, whatever it was. And there were games that he could have won for his team and he didn't. 
You know, as a player, I've had times like that when it was up to me and I messed it up. And I had times when it was up to me and I got it right. But you want to bet I've messed it up a whole lot of times more. So when you do get it right, you know that you've learned from your mistakes. I, I'm just having trouble ending this vlog, this podcast. I just want to talk for ages. But I want to play Red Dead Redemption. To, Redemption? I want to play Red Dead Redemption, to be honest. Just staring at it right now, it's staring me out too. I don't know. Um, but that's it. That's it for the podcast. Thank you all, whatever platform you're on. If you're on YouTube, like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, on iTunes, I don't know exactly what you're meant to do. I, think, I don't know. The, can you like it on iTunes? I should do my research, really. <laughs> anyway, guys, I want to thank you all for being here. I am Louise21. If you like this podcast, and if you're hearing it on audio, go over to my YouTube channel, Louise21, and check out my vlogs. If you want to see more of me, or hear more of me, or both, or whatever, or hear me attempt to make jokes that aren't even funny, as long as they're not racist, it's fine. <laughs> oh, God. All right, take it easy, fam. And good luck in whatever you're doing. Remember, life is a roller coaster. You just gotta ride it. As Roland Keating once said. Take it easy, fam. Peace.